Okay, so John 10.10. 10. Amen. Amen. The thief comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. And the enemy wants to steal from you. Do you understand why? Right, we're created after God's image. And he doesn't like that. Actually, what we have as sons and daughters is exactly what he wanted. And in John 10, it says, but he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But this is from, this is from the gospel of John. And Jesus Christ said, as a contrasting statement to that, I am come that they may have life. Right? Whereas the enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, to contrast that, I have come that they may have life. And the Greek for the word life there is zoe, meaning physical and spiritual. So he covers every base. So this is not just spiritual blessing. This is also things that we need in our body, our finances, our relationships. I have come that they may have life and that they would have it more abundant. I don't know what is there that's more than abundant, but it's abundant. I'm, I'm happy with abundant, but he says more than abundant, more abundantly. And the enemy wants to steal from us. And many times the greatest threat that the enemy brings is he wants to steal your knowledge. He wants you to become ignorant of who you are. That is one of the greatest things. The enemy wants to steal your identity. And you always ask, every morning sometimes we'll ask ourselves, who am I really? You get up every morning, what am I here for? Who am I? I have an identity statement. And I, this is my go-to when I'm feeling pummeled and tired. <laughs> and let me read it to you. I am Ambassador Mark C. Katigbak. <laughs> the C stands for courage and Christ-likeness. I am very proud to be here today to represent my king and my country, heaven. My father, the king, sends his love and his greetings to you. I am his son. I am fearfully and wonderfully made in such perfect health. I am a blessing. I'm a revivalist. I'm a restorer. I'm a rejuvenator. I'm a hero. I'm a healer. I'm a teacher. I'm a preacher. Amen. I'm a pastor. I'm a father. I am a lion king. I'm regal, strong, full of character, a defender of the weak, provider for the poor, protector of the kingdom territory. That's just for starters. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you have to make an identity statement. Make your own identity statement. Who are you? Who does the king say you are? So today what we want to do is awaken and revive the real, the real person. Sometimes when we stumble in here on a Sunday morning, it's like, you're tired, you don't know which way is up or down, and you just show up because that's what you do on Sundays. But listen, we need to awaken the real, true person, the one that's excited to be alive, because there is purpose. God didn't create us to just exist. He created us to be alive more abundantly. And I was praying about this message and I realized that knowing what I am will help me understand many things about identity. Um, I, love, I, love the, I love the book of Genesis. Uh, a, a lot of the essence and so forth. So um, let, me just, let me just dive right into it. So in Genesis chapter one, God's busy. We see that in verse 3, it says, and God said. In verse 6, it says, and God said. In verse 9, and God said. And God said, and God said. 
He created everything. And we know God is good at saying and creating. God said and God said. And what happened is that after God created these things, he spoke into it, into the, he spoke into the source out of which the substance was created. So what I mean by that is that when God wanted to create trees and vegetations, he spoke to the earth. He spoke to the waters to create the fish. He spoke again to the earth to, to create livestock. He spoke to the heavens to create the stars. So he spoke and he aimed these words to the source out of which to create substance. And it's an important principle of creation. The substance must remain attached to its source in order to survive. In order to survive. The trees and the, and the vegetation need to remain anchored to the dirt or it dies. The fish remain, has to remain in the water or it dies. Even the stars, if they were to come to the earth, they would crash as a meteorite. And so God will always speak to the source out of which to create substance. And God said, let there be, right? And God said, and God said. But in verse 26, God said, let us. God spoke to himself. Let us create man. Let us create man. And he spoke to himself because he wanted to create man. He spoke to himself because that would be our source. We are the substance. The source is God. So we are nothing like whatever dirt is. Although we'll see later on why we're dirt bags. But I'll get back to you then. So whatever is the source, whatever is in the source is in the substance. Therefore, everything that is in substance came from the source. You follow? So let me ask you something. Now, what kind of stuff? Oh, by the way, that is truth number one about your identity. Our source out of which our substance comes out of is God. He is the one source. Now, what kind of stuff is God made of? God is spirit, right? So the animals and the plants, they came out of the dirt. So really, they're dirt, right? They're, they're substance. They're mud. But God is spirit. And God is 100% spirit. Therefore, what is man made of? So when God created man, man was also 100% spirit. So God is spirit, man is spirit. And, and they said, let us make man. Let us make man out of our image. And the word there, make, implies bearing fruit akin to having children. Let us make man. Amen? So, whatever is in God is in man. That's one of the biggest reasons why God cares about us so much. Right? He, he, he's Papa. In, in Jeremiah 1, chapter, uh, chapter, or Jeremiah 1, verse 4 and 5, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before I formed you, I knew you. Before you were knit together in your mother's womb, I knew you. Implying prior to the physical development in the womb, God knew you already. Where is the Father located? According to the prayer, our Father, who art in So if God is in heaven and God knew you before you were knit in your mother's womb, where do you think you were before you were? Amen? This should, this is about identity, folks. 
and knowing exactly the true person that you are is so vital, is so vital. Your source is God, your 100% spirit. That's the real you. And I believe before this preaching is done, there will be some of you, the Holy Spirit is going to open your eyes and you're going to see people in the spirit. Because that's the real person. This dirt bag <laughs> isn't the real person. It really isn't. Think about that. It's an earth suit. How about that's better? <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven. So if you and I were hanging out with God before he sent us to earth, we were hanging out with Papa in heaven. God is spirit, therefore we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Therefore we were hanging out with Papa in the spirit. Remember there's a verse in John 4, it says the time is coming where you will, there will be worshipers. And in verse 24, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. So when we come together, the spirit man, the real you needs to show up and connect. Amen? So that, that is the truth number two, which is we were created 100% spirit. In, in Psalms 8, I'm trying to go fast. In Psalms 8, 4 and 5, this is, this is powerful. This, this really, really blew me away. What is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him. For you have made him just a little lower than the angels. Guys, when I looked at the Hebrew translation of angels, it actually says Elohim. It's not angels. My, my, my knees just about buckled. <sighs> what are we that you care for us, Lord? God made you and I just a little bit lower than himself. Hmm. Do you know who you are, people? Do you know your identity? Oh, my goodness. I hope that keeps you awake tonight. <laughs> who you really are. God created you just a little lower than himself. You are not like him. You are of him. God created us. Listen, knowing that, that's truth number three. God created us with a great, great, grand authority. If you just think about being just a little below God himself. Uh, there is a DNA test in the Bible. It's in Luke chapter 3, and it's called the genealogy of Jesus. And genealogy talks about bloodline, lineage, origin, parentage, ancestry, bloodline. And if you were to take a 23andMe <laughs> DNA test, and if God the Father would come down, 
it would reveal that you and him have the same DNA. Because if you look at Luke chapter 3, verse 23, Jesus was about 30 years old and he began his ministry and he was known as the son of Joseph and Joseph was the son of Heli and it goes on and on and if you put up verse 38, who was the son of Enosh, who was the son of Seth and the son of Adam and Adam is the son. Flesh and blood, Adam, is the son. Our flesh and blood, Adam, our great, great ancestor, is the son of God. Do you know who you are? There is so much potential and greatness in each and every one of us. It's like a seed of an oak tree that in that is an oak, but it needs to be planted according to God's purpose in your life. Man is spirit. So let me, let me just, let me see if I can close with this um, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 said so, so God said let us make man in our image after our likeness right so the source is God himself and then the next verse says and let them have dominion it didn't say let us have dominion meaning God God said, let them, let them have dominion. Do you know who you are? God said it, and he put it into action. Let them have dominion. <sighs> he wanted us to have dominion because he wanted us to be the ones in charge of this earth. But there was a situation that existed. Because remember we said our substance is God and we're 100% spirit. Um, the problem was the earth was physical. And we're spirit. So, what God did was he made an earth suit. He got, God is in man, right? He's our father. So, God the invisible is in our spirit, which is invisible, the unseen. That invisible, unseen spirit is now in a seen earth suit. And the unseen and the seen earth suit is now to take dominion on a seen earth. You, you, you see, do you see how the government of heaven has been put into order? The unseen God created an unseen sun. The unseen sun was put in the seen earth suit, and the earth suit is to take dominion over the seen yeah. earthly realm. Right. Right. Whew. I'm sorry. <laughs> when I was trying to wrap my head around this, it was... So, um, I'm out of time, but let me just say, I want this to really sink in to your identity. And if the worship team could come up, I'd appreciate it that this would sink in to your soul, into your mind that sometimes will tell your spirit who you are and your spirit will confirm to your soul an agreeance to that. And that the reason God put the 100% you spirit in a earth suit was so that 
you could have dominion over your situations. That, that what transpires is not something out of control, but that you have authority. After all, you're just a little bit lower than God. Oh. Whew. Hallelujah. And so my prayer is that we will be given the honor of glimpsing each other in the spirit who we really are and if you think about that then this is not our final place we have work to do and then we go home we have work to do then we go home amen let's pray hallelujah Woo. hallelujah hallelujah lord we thank you father we thank you, Father. Uh, today is a new day, Father God. And it brings blessings and it brings battles, Lord. But we are up for the challenge, Lord, because greater are you that is in us. But Lord, with every uncertainty that we face, there is always the hidden truth that we are victorious in Christ, Father God. So we don't dread any challenge that lies ahead. Because we know all victories. And we have the confidence that it's not in our circumstances, but by the Spirit of God that supplies the victory. And we will be steady under pressure. We will be ready. Whatever comes our way, the outcome is always consistent. We will overcome because of Christ is in me. I am enough. I can handle it because of Christ who is in me. My purpose is at stake, and he who called me is faithful. His strength is in me and greater than any pain or any enemy I face. The promise of God is mine for the taking. Any plan he has is guaranteed to come to pass. It will happen if I don't back down, if I don't let go, it will happen. If I don't stop short, if I don't sell out, it will happen. I can handle it because my power flows from His presence. So Lord, we won't get stuck. We won't worry about Goliath, Lord. Because we can handle it, Lord God. I am stronger. I am better. I am ready. I am focused. I am hopeful. No hiding. It is settled. I am stronger, I am better. I am ready, I am focused, I am hopeful. No hiding, it is settled. It is settled. I am stronger, I am better. I am ready, Lord. I am so focused, I am filled with hope. It is settled, Lord. And I know, Lord, that you will deliver the one God, the great God who is my God, you will deliver because lord you are greater than all in jesus name amen hallelujah amen praise you jesus wow did you guys get that around your head everything god was saying wow It was such a powerful word. Thank you, Pastor Mark. It was good. I felt like as he was bringing this today about identity theft, I felt like God wants to shut doors to areas where the enemy keeps coming in and out. Places where you have believed God, you've trusted God, but then you're wondering why he keeps coming back. If we could just lower just a little bit. There's things that sometimes God just wants to wake us up to. Areas that we keep being robbed from. Even as he started the word, John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Lord has come to give us life more abundantly. And I feel like God wants to restore areas this morning 
as we heard the word, he wants to restore identity. The places where the enemy keeps coming in and out, in and out, stealing, taking from you. When you already know, and as he well said this morning with the word of God, how much we have and who we are. And knowing all the word that he's saying, and even as he preached this to us, how much more do we get to stand against all these trials that we go through? You know what I'm saying? And so I really feel if we can stand, we'll go ahead and close. Um, God wants to give you a new strategy this morning. But he's also restoring the gift of discernment in the body of Christ. That you begin to recognize and discern what is God and what is not. And a lot of us call what, God, what is God, but it's really not God. And what is not God, we call it as God. And that's how sometimes our identity is so messed up and under the lie of the enemy. And so Lord, today as we close, God, in all that we heard through your word, I thank you that you are restoring right now, Father, everything that is true and what you've said about us, but you would take the lie right now and we exchange that lie to what the, it is truth. And Lord, there's an exchange of heaven right now in this morning that you're exchanging lies, accusations, insinuations, things that are not really there. Enemies that are not appear to be what they are. Sometimes we make our enemies bigger than what they are. And the Lord says, no, you are greater than the enemy. For greater is he in you, greater is he in you, right? than he that is out in the world. So greater is in you, so the great I am is in you. So Lord, this morning, I ask you to restore the greater in us. We already have it, but I ask you to reveal that even more as our eyes are awakened this morning in the name of Jesus. And I feel like the Lord is taking some numbness off of some of you. You've been walking through seasons of numbness. I feel like there's some of you have just kind of like survived through the season. Kind of like, Lord, I'm just getting by. I'm just getting through. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Raise your hand if you've been walking through something like that. Don't be shy because shame is going to fall off of you. That's right. Some of you have been walking through some numbness. Some of you have like, oh, well, God, I'm just here because you told me to be here. No, God wants to restore your passion and love again. He wants to restore who you are. So keep your hand up, those who, are, who, keep, who raise their hands. Lord, I just thank you. You see all these hands raised right now. I ask you to release, Father, identity this morning and that you put back the passion that they were called for. And wherever it was robbed, I break that assignment off of you, demonic attacks against you and who you are. And so, Lord, I ask you to restore true identity and Father, where it's been broken. And I thank you, Lord, that you are refilling them right now. Fill them up, fill them up, fill them up, fill them up. Holy Spirit, fill them up right now that they will sense your presence and that they're not just doing things out of survival, but they're doing out of things out of abundance. You carry God's abundance. So Lord, I release and decree abundance over each person right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you and I release that right now. That Holy Spirit would just break off every lie and everything that holds you being who you are. You are a king. You are a queen. You're a son and a daughter. And we bless you this morning so that you would rule and reign where God has given you dominion. Come on, authority. You have dominion. You have dominion in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So I want to invite you, those who raise their hands, come on up this way. Come on up. I want to invite you to come up. I want you to come up and begin to ask the Lord to restore that area in your life where it was taken, where it was robbed, that the Lord would just touch you. But before we do that, I, I want to ask if anyone wants to recommit their lives to the Lord, is someone that you walked away from the Lord and you're here again and you said, Lord, I want to recommit my life again. I want to recommit that area of my life where I walked away from you. I wasn't, I wasn't faithful to you, Lord. I just did my own ways. Is that you? Raise your hand. 
Raise your hand. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. All right. Could someone come near her right now? We're going to pray that right now, that God would just restore. Just come around her right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to open up that area as well. You said, I was touched by the service. I was touched by God's presence. And you want to accept Jesus in your heart to come and that he will rewrite your history and rewrite your story. If that's you, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation, the miracle of salvation. Thank you, Lord. Okay, guess we're good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. For those who are hungry for God and want to see a move of God in your life, come on up. Come on up. You want to see a hunger and you want to ask God to just touch you. Some of you are being called in this season of your life and God is asking you to stand in new places where you haven't stood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If I want the ministry team to come up right now and we can begin to just minister. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, right now. Thank you, Lord. Just go to them. Go to them right now. Just go and follow the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right now, just get hungry before the Lord. Come on, just pull on heaven right now. God is pouring out His Spirit. He's doing something new this morning. He always is. He, that's just who He is. Thank you, Lord. Just pour down right now, God. Pour it out, Jesus. Pour it out. New hunger, new hunger. Recommitments right now. That you are restoring passion, passion, fire, fire in your people, Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, restore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. More God. More God. More God right now. More God. Release God. I need some ministers over here on this side. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 